Peace and blessings. It's me, Tracy Lene. You know it's me. Why do we say that it's me? You can see it's me. Anywho, I'm a little bit nervous because today marks the first day that I embark on a new journey of reading a book to you. Not like Audible, because in Audible, they just read the book straight through and they don't comment. I'm going to comment. So if you like Audible, you won't like me if you don't want people to stop. I'm going to read a chapter a day until this book is done. The first book I picked is, is a game changer in life. It's called The Game of Life and How to Play It. And it's by a little old lady who's no longer on this side named Florence Shogo Shin. You might have heard of the book before. I was introduced to this book in 1987. My parents were getting a divorce and my mom picked up the book or someone gave it to her, I don't know. But anyway, it was on her bed and I started reading it and it really helped level me up to another level in life. I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna stop in between. I'm gonna do this every day until I finish this book, my little own private book club with you coming on along with me. And then I'll pick another book. I would love it, of course, if you like this channel and subscribed, you have to say that part. Anywho, I feel like if people want to do that, they're going to do it. But all of the reading says you should say it, remind people. So click the like button right now and the subscribe button and share it. I would love for you to do that. The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Shovel Shin. I'm going to read chapter one, The Game. Most people consider life a battle, but it is not a battle. It is a game. It is a game, however, which cannot be played successfully without the knowledge of spiritual law and the Old and New Testaments give the rules of the game with wonderful clearness. Jesus Christ taught that it was the great game of giving and receiving. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This means that whatever man sends out in the world in word or deed will return to him what he gives, he will receive. If he gives hate, he will receive hate. If he gives love, he will receive love. Think about that for a few moments in your own life. And I know I can say whenever I've had an, a bad day or woke up and I'm angry, I encounter all angry people. But when I wake up and I'm having a really happy day, I encounter happy people. Those angry people are still there, but they're not on my radar because I'm in the vibration of love and happiness. If he gives criticism, he will receive criticism. If he lies, he will be lied to. If he cheats, he will be cheated. We are taught also that the imaginary, the imagining faculty plays a leading part in the game of life. Yeah. Keep thy heart or imagination with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. That is Proverbs 23. Now, this is not a Christian book as much as it is just the principle of life and the Bible, which... Jesus never said he was a Christian, but hey, we'll go on with that. The people who came after him decided to make him that. Jesus was really about love and self-love self and the love of God. This means that what a man imagines sooner or later externalizes in his affairs. I know of a man who feared a certain disease. It was a very rare disease and difficult to get, but he pictured it continually and read about it until it manifested in his body and he died the victim of distorted imagination. Now, I know you can think of things in your life that you have imagined and then it happened. Not all the time, because I think sometimes we go straight for the worst things because we're wired, our brains are wired for survival. So we go straight for the worst of things, but there's something inside of us, like, girl, you know that can't happen. Well, you know that's not happening. And I think that we then pull ourselves back in. But when you truly believe a thing over and over and over, it probably comes to true. So we see, to play successfully the game of life, we must train the imagining facility, faculty. Yeah, I'm going to say words wrong and correct a lot. <laughs> a person with an imagining faculty trained to, to image only good brings into his life every righteous desire of his heart, health, wealth, love, friends, perfect self-expression, his highest ideals. The imagination has been called the scissors of the mind, and it is ever cutting, cutting day by day, the pictures man sees there, and sooner or later, he meets his own creations in this outer world. To train the imagination successfully, man must understand the workings of his mind. The Greeks said, know thyself. Your honorable Elijah Muhammad said that too. Yeah, he said to know yourself. <laughs> You have to study yourself to know yourself. And studying yourself requires a journal. 
and it requires a journal because you need to write it down so you can go back and look at how you handle different situations so that you can know how to handle when they come up again in a different way, but they come up again. There are three departments of the mind, the subconscious, conscious, and super subconscious. The subconscious is simply power without direction. It is like a steam or electricity, and it does what it is directed to do. It has no power of induction. Whatever man feels deeply or imagines clearly is oppressed upon the subconscious mind and carried out in the minutest detail. I know that to be true. I have sat and meditated on things every day at the same time and then watched life go right in that direction. This is an example she has. For example, a woman I know when a child always made believe she was a widow. She dressed up in black clothes and wore a long black veil and people thought she was very clever and amusing. She grew up and married a man with whom she was deeply in love. In a short time, he died. She wore black and a sweeping veil for many years. The picture of herself as a widow was impressed upon the subconscious mind and in due time worked itself out, regardless of the havoc it created. That's why whenever you are imagining to want something, you have to go to the minutest detail of having it. And I always add, in a fun, loving, and happy way, it comes to me. And I say that because I could say, I want a million dollars, and my mom could die, and my insurance could give me a million dollars, but I don't want that. That's not fun and loving, so I don't want a million dollars that way. So I say, yeah, I want a million dollars in a fun and loving way, you know, so that it does not bring havoc, because the universe only knows yes. Every thought that you really think about constantly, it comes true, and if you don't believe it, Write it down and then go back when situations happen and you can then connect the dots. It's hard to remember the connect the dots. But if you write it down, if you journal, I have journals, 10 years worth of journals. And I started going back into them and I could see connections of where some of the thoughts that I had that were self-defeating, I didn't deal with them and eradicate them and they started coming right back through. The, con the conscious mind has been called the mortal or carnal mind. It is the human mind and sees life as it appears to be. It sees death, disaster, sickness, poverty, and limitation of every kind. And it impresses the subconscious. The super subconscious mind is the mind of God within each man and it is the realm of perfect ideas. It is in this perfect pattern spoken of by Plato, the divine design. For there is a divine design for each person. You are here on purpose. The circumstances surrounding your birth, yeah, that may be etchy and sketchy, but you're still here on purpose. You needed those circumstances, I believe, so that you could propel yourself to the highest level for you. You needed that that adversity, that, that stuff that you bring so that you can say, well, no, I'm not going to take that on anymore. I'm going to do this. For me, being born by a 16-year-old or 17 by the time she had me, I was... I always wanted to be perfect. I wanted to justify wrecking the life of somebody who had graduated high school early and was on her way to college, a college of her choice, a full ride. So I needed to justify, well, if I, if I wrecked that, then I need to be perfect. And then I wasn't perfect, nowhere near perfect. And then I judged myself. And then it was just like a spiral. And then I would bring people into my life that would further make me feel like I wasn't good enough. Because if I don't feel I'm good enough, then the universe says, yes, she doesn't feel she's good enough. Hey, you, come over here. You, you, yeah, I know you ain't shit. Come over here. I need you to tell her she ain't shit. I need you to make her feel like she ain't good enough. She gonna like you, but I need you to, you know, mess over her because she don't think she's good enough. Until finally I said, no, I don't want that anymore. Anywho, there is a place that you are to feel and no one else can feel. Something you are to do, which no one else can do. There are many people who make jewelry, but they don't make jewelry like me. Mm -mm. You know why? Because they ain't me. Their jewelry is beautiful. They don't make personalized journals like me. Their journals are great, but they're not me. I'm here to do that. I'm here to speak to that tribe that needs me. You're here to speak to the tribe that needs you. <clears throat> there is a perfect picture of it in the super subconscious mind. It usually flashes across the conscious as an unobtainable idea. Something too good to be true. Mm -hmm. That word impossible, I think that's the ego's way of knowing well, if I can't do it let's just say it's impossible but in the word impossible is I'm possible gives you a clue it's possible there is nothing impossible I heard my son said one time we can't fly and I'm like well yes we can we get in the plane no our own bodies I said well 
we haven't made the suit to do that yet to put on our bodies but they do it in the superhero movies all the time so we can fly so that's not impossible nothing is impossible Ooh. and in reality it is man's true destiny or destination flashed to himself from the infinite intelligence which is within himself many people however are in ignorance of their true destinies and are striving for things and situations which do not belong to them and would only bring failure and dissatisfaction if attained for example, a woman came to me and asked me to speak the word that she would marry a certain man with whom she was very much in love. She called him A.B. I replied that this would be a violation of spiritual law, but that I would speak the word for the right man, the divine selection, the man who belonged to her by divine right. Ladies, God don't send other people's husbands to you. It just doesn't happen. You can say, well, he's so unhappy with her and I'm his soulmate. Well, if that was the case, then God would have made sure that the two of them were no longer together before you all started digging in each other's clothes. Because God just doesn't work like that. I know, for you, God does. Because, you know, nobody can judge you. You're not perfect. And you can make mistakes. And yeah, that's a big one. And you'll reap what that is. You'll reap that. Ooh, you'll reap it. You don't like it. Anywho, I added it. A.B. is and that's for men, too. Because now they got all of these... Sleek, sneaky link men and sneaky link women. It's just trifling. Just digging in each other's clothes. Destroying each other's spiritual essence. Bringing in deception. You know, so getting deception shot right up in you, ladies. Yeah, I wanted to be crass like that. He's shooting that deception right up in you. And it's going all up and through you. And mirroring out. And deception is coming from everywhere. Just stop it. And not judging you to tell you stop it. Loving you. Stop it. I added, if A.B. is the right man, you can't lose him. If he isn't, you will receive his equivalent. She saw A.B. frequently, but no headway was made in their friendship. A.B. wasn't interested in her. One evening, she called and said, do you know for the last week, A.B. hasn't seemed so wonderful to me? I replied, maybe he is not the divine selection. Another man may be the right one. Soon after that, she met another man who fell in love with her at once and who said she was his ideal. In fact, he said all of the things that she had always wished A.B. would say, say to her. When I was growing up, my mother told me, marry the man that loves you, not the man that you love. Because men in this dispensation of time can tend to be very selfish. And if they're not in love with you, they can just drag you down the street till your arms come off. That ride or die, you ain't got to ride or die. No, why can't you just ride and live? You ain't got to be nobody's ride or die. Be your own ride or die. This, okay, she said, so she remarked the lady. It was quite uncanny. She soon returned his love and lost all interest in A.B. This shows the law of substitution. A right idea was substituted for a wrong one. Therefore, there was no loss or sacrifice involved. So, if you meet a man and he's married and he, or a woman and she's married and they're acting like you're the best thing since sliced bread and you fall for it, yeah. It's not very wise. You could have waited for your person because your person is around. And there are people who say, well, my person never came because you never really, really wanted them to. If you're just being honest, if you look inside yourself, you ain't really want it. If you did, they'd be there. Nothing is ever a loss. Jesus Christ said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And he said the kingdom was within man. So everything you need is within you. Didn't say you need to go to the church. Didn't say you need to call yourself a Christian. He said the kingdom of God was within you. See, and if you seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, all of the, all that really is saying is when you decide to live your highest moral and spiritual values, all of the things you're vibrating too high for all of that foolishness. Does that mean things can happen? Yeah, it, things can happen. But they happen to show you where you are on the level. They really do. Things come into our lives to show us where we're on the level. I also want to add a disclaimer. I am never, ever talking to anybody who has experienced a violent tragedy. I don't have the right, and I would never tell you you deserve to, to experience that. So I am speaking and reading and adding my commentary for the lighthearted things that happen in life. For those heavier things, I hope that the book is helping you to kind of take your mind off of it, but get some therapy. Help yourself get through that because you are worthy. You really are worthy and you did not deserve it on the level of you're a horrible, bad, terrible person. Unless you did something horrible, bad, and terrible and it's, you know, the karmic equivalent, then just go through it. I, I was telling somebody the other day that when karma comes, just say, okay, karma, thank you. 
I got I got my get back and then keep it moving move through it because you know that it's something that you deserve but not everybody deserves that Anywho, the kingdom is the realm of right ideals or the divine pattern Jesus Christ taught that man's word played a leading part in the game of life by your words you are justified and by your words you are condemned Many people have brought disaster into their lives through idle words. We do that all the time now. We are literally always speaking terrible things. I'm broke. I ain't got no money. Well, then money's like, oh, well, she broke. She ain't got no money. I'm not going over there. And, and then some people say, well, yeah, it's phony to say I got money and I don't. No, it's not phony. <clears throat> it's believing because we're always in the now moment. It's saying what you want and feeling it. That's what it really is. And here's an example she gives. For an example. A woman asked me why her life was now one of poverty and limitation. Formerly, she had a home, was surrounded by beautiful things, and had plenty of money. We found she had often been tired of the management of her home and had repeatedly said, I am sick and tired of things. I wish I lived in a trunk. And she added, today I am living in that trunk. She had spoken herself into a trunk. The subconscious mind has no sense of humor. And the people often joke themselves into unhappy experiences. Remember that. The subconscious mind is not Eddie Murphy or Kevin Hart. So stop laughing and saying things. <clears throat> For an example, next, to, next time I read, I'm going to bring my tea. Because it's 16 minutes, but it's going to be a little bit longer. But it's a book club. So hopefully you're, you know, doing your little housework and listening. That would be nice. You're at work. Turn you to ball. Unless you're on your break. Do your work. For example, a woman who had a great deal of money joked continually about getting ready for the poorhouse. In a few years, she was almost destitute, having impressed the subconscious mind with a picture of lack and limitation. Fortunately, the law works both ways, and a situation of lack may be changed to one of plenty. For example, a woman came to me one hot summer day for a treatment for prosperity. She was worn out, dejected, and discouraged. You guys can relate to that. I know I can. She said she possessed just $8 in the world. I said, good, we'll bless the $8 and multiply them as Jesus Christ multiplied the loaves and the fishes. For he taught that every man had the power to bless and multiply, to heal and to prosper. She said, what shall I do next? I replied, follow intuition. Have you a hunch to do anything or to go anywhere? Intuition means intuition to be taught from within. Intuition. It is man's unerring God, and I will deal more fully with it its laws in the following chapter, which we won't get to today. Because, good, yeah, one more page, two more pages. Thank you for listening this long. I figured they're all be about 30 minutes, a little bit less, maybe. The woman replied, I don't know. I seem to have a hunch to go home. I have just enough money for car fare. Her home was in a distant city and was one of lack and limitation, and the reasoning mind or intellect would have said, stay in New York and get work and make some money. I replied, then go home. Never violate a hunch. Never violate a hunch, but make sure it's a hunch, not your ego. You know how you know the difference? Sit with it for a minute. And if it's still there after you say, hey, ego, is this you? If ego, if this you, raise your hand. And if you feel a little hand go, <laughs> then don't do it. That's not a hunch. That's your ego. But if you feel that ego, say, nah, dog. Ain't me. I'm sitting over here chilling, waiting for somebody to cut you off in traffic so I can go off on the motherfuckers. <laughs> that's, that's ego. Ego does that, right? Anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Never violate a hunch. I spoke the following words for her. Infinite spirit. Open the way for great abundance for... And then she obviously said her name. She is an irresistible magnet for all that belongs to her by divine right. Let me stop and tell you this. Nobody else needs to do this for you. You can do it for yourself. You don't need the pastor. You don't need the priest. You don't need the uh, psychic. You can do this for yourself. You are equipped eternally to do it, internally to do it. Now what happens while you need those other people is because you haven't trusted yourself fully. But when you trust yourself fully, you don't need them. They're still good because there are people who won't trust themselves fully. They can go with them. But you can go with them. You got this, girl or boy. I told her to repeat it continually also. She left for home immediately, and calling a woman one day, she linked up with an old friend of her family. Through this friend, she received thousands of dollars in a most miraculous way. Hey, we like miraculous money. She had said to me often, tell people about the woman who came to you with $8 and a hunch. There is always plenty on man's pathway. 
but it can only be brought into manifestation through desire, faith, or the spoken word. Hey, that's affirmations. Jesus Christ brought out clearly that man must make the first move. Remember that thing? You take one step, God will take two. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. That is Matthew 7 and 7, which is 14, which is then 7, which is, no, 14 is 4, no, look at me, which is 1 and 4, which is 5, and 5 is change. So it is telling you, if you knock, you will get a change. In scriptures we read, concerning the works of my hands, command ye me. Infinite intelligence, God, is ever ready to carry out man's smallest or greatest demands. It doesn't matter how you see God. I happen to see the divine as a divine mother. I do believe there's a divine father, but I happen to go into prayer and talk to my mommy, the divine mother. I ask her for everything, just like my children ask me for everything, just like your children ask you for everything. You and the father can be sitting right beside each other. And they'll walk in the room, stand right in front of you and say, Mom. Can I, Baba, do, 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 do. Daddy sitting right there, never ask him a thing. You know why? Not that they disrespect daddy, because they know all the power is in the hands of mama, right? Mama. So, yeah, I, I do believe in the divine father and the divine mother and connected together. They made me. Okay. <laughs> Where was that? Okay. Every desire uttered or unexpressed is a demand. We often are startled by having a wish suddenly fulfilled. You ever done that? You ever said something and it happened immediately? I know I have. For example, one Easter, having seen many beautiful roses and trees in the forest, florist windows, I wished I would receive one. And for an instant, I saw it mentally being carried into the door. Easter came and with it a beautiful rose tree. I thanked my friend the following day and told her it was just what I had wanted. She replied, I ain't seen you no rose tree. I sent you lilies. She probably had an Instacart driver and then they got to the store and they didn't have lilies. And then they just said, they ain't got no lilies. I'm going to get her this because I want to get her something. When God was at work, the man had mixed the order and sent me a rose tree simply because I had started the law in action. I had to have a rose tree. Ask yourself or remember for yourself times that this has happened. I'm going to give you a second. Not maybe a rose tree, but. You have wanted something. Go, oh my God, I was just saying I wanted this. See, told you, told you. Yeah, y'all. Nothing stands between man and his highest ideals and every desire of his heart, but doubt and fear. Fear, false evidence appearing real. Fuck fear. Get on out of here, fear. The only thing to fear is fear yourself. And I decide I don't fear, fear no more. Fuck you, fear. Get out of here. Get out of here, fear. When a man can wish without worrying, every desire will be instantly fulfilled. They, I've heard that worry is soul suicide. See, you already have everything you want. You may not see it because you're not looking at it. So if you already have it, if you have it, if you desire it, it's because it's a part of you. Like, I don't desire to bake cakes. But there's a baker that desires to bake cakes. They make these beautiful cakes. They want to make a business out of it. I don't desire to do that. And I want to eat that cake. Because you know what that's saying? You can't, the, the true saying is you can't eat your cake and have it too. Not you can't have your cake and eat it too. It makes no sense to give somebody a piece of cake and say you can't eat it. That's foolish. The saying is you can't eat your cake and have it too. Because if you eat it, you no longer have it. So that's the saying. So stop saying you can't have your cake and eat it too because that's wrong. It's just wrong. It's you can't eat your cake and have it too. That's the right saying. I looked it up. I knew it didn't seem right in the first place. Okay, where was I at? <sighs> I will explain more fully in the following chapter the scientific reason for this and how fear must be erased from the consciousness. It is man's only enemy. Fear of lack, fear of failure, fear of sickness, fear of loss, and a feeling of insecurity on some plane. Jesus Christ said, Why are you feel for? Oh, ye of little faith. That's Matthew 8 and 26, which is 16, which is 7. Okay, 7 represents luck. And I guess you shouldn't fear because you're lucky. So we can we can see why we must substitute faith for fear. For fear is only inverted faith. It is faith in evil instead of good. The object of the game of life is to see clearly one's good and to obliterate all mental pictures of evil. This must be done by impressing the subconscious mind with a realization of good. And there are many tools to do that. There's tapping, meditation, prayer, fasting, all these good things you can do to get rid of that. A very brilliant man who has attained great success told me he had suddenly erased all fear from his consciousness by reading a sign which hung in a room. He saw printed in large letters this statement. Why worry? 
it will probably never happen. You might want to like get yourself a piece of paper or get somebody to do the artwork for you and put that and put it like right on your nightstand. So as soon as you wake up, don't worry, it'll probably never happen. There's some other things I think you should put on your nightstand too that I have on mine that help me every morning. These words were stamped indefinitely upon his subconscious mind, and he has now a firm conviction that only good can come into his life. Therefore, only good can manifest. When you think like that, it does not mean that you will never have things happen to you. Come on now, you're not two. Fairy tales don't exist like that. And even in fairy tales, there's always uh, good. The girl meets boy. Boy and girl like each other. There's an obstacle. Boy and girl break up. Boy and girl go on about their separate ways. Both racking up partners. Ha <laughs> ha. They don't show you that part. Then boy and girl meet up again and go, oh my God, it's been you all along. What was I thinking? Or a boy goes meet somebody else, a girl meets somebody else, and they're happy. Either way, happy comes out of it all. Okay, so in the following chapter, I will deal with the different methods of impressing the subconscious mind. It is man's faithful servant, but one must be careful to give it the right orders. Man has an ever silent listener at his side, his subconscious mind. Every thought, every word is impressed upon it and carried out in amazing detail. It is like a singer making a record on the sensitive disc of the phonographic plate. We don't do that no more. It's a little bit different, but you know, this book was written in like the 30s or the 40s. Every note and tone of the singer's voice is registered. If he coughs or hesitates, it is registered also. So let us break all the old bad records in the subconscious mind, the records of our lives which we do not wish to keep and make new and beautiful ones. Speak these words aloud with power and conviction. Let's say this together. I now smash. Say it. I now smash and demolish by my spoken word every untrue record in my subconscious mind. They shall return to the dust heap of their native nothingness, for they came from my vain imaginations. I now make perfect records through the Christ within. The records of health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. This is the square of life, the game completed. Let's say that again. Let's say it together if you didn't last time. I now smash and demolish by my spoken word every untrue record in my subconscious mind. They shall return to the dust heap of their native nothingness. For they came from my own vain imaginings. I now make my perfect record through the Christ within. The record of health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. This is the square of life. The game completed. And so it is. In the following chapters, I will show how a man can change his conditions by changing his words. Any man who does not know the power of his word is behind the times. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18 and 21. Tomorrow, we will I will read with you the law of prosperity. This book has no cover because I've read it so many times. And while my life isn't perfect, I've had a really good life. It's been 55 years of amazingness. And it started with this at 19. Thank you so very much for your time. Join me tomorrow. Please like, share, and subscribe. And again, this is ain't audible. This is ain't audible. This is not audible. I'm going to stop and talk. So if you just like it on Audible, you can actually get this book on YouTube. There are plenty of people that read it. The Game of Life and How to Play It. And the author is Florence Shovelshin. You have an amazing and blessed and, and just perfect day. I love you so very much. Mwah. Like, share, and subscribe. I got to get a catchphrase. I don't have one yet, but I'm going to get one. Bye.